simply give it up and quit before they start to fight. The really down and outside, you can always hear them say, If I had another chance, you know I'd go another way. You know I'd live it to the limit every day and every night. Live it to the limit, I make everything alright. Live it to the limit, learn this lesson right. You know I learn this lesson right. 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 Guests, uh, you've seen them. Uh, I hope you have seen them. You should if you haven't yet at the Plaza Hotel. They are the house band right now, Tony Robertson and the Vaqueros. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. You're very welcome. Now, I understand the Vaqueros, in one form or another, have been together since what, the eight, 1987? 87, yeah. Uh, that's when I, I took a solo trip down to Austin, Texas, just because I wanted to see what was out there. Like I, all the bands from there, I loved so much, right? So I just had to go there. I just sort of had a uh, spiritual sojourn, so to speak, down there. And, uh, and came back with a whole wad of records and stuff and sat down with a couple of great players in Vancouver, Pat Stewart and uh, a guy named Dave Kilner and later Norm Fisher. And uh, we put this band together, which is kind of a power Texas rock trio. Mm -hmm. And then sort of evolved from there. So what is Texas rock, Tony? It's, uh, it's blues with a little bit of uh, uh, country influence and rock and roll influence in it. Not so much country, but more like blues and rock. So it's like 
like the blues guys were rocking long before the rock and roll guys were rocking, you know what I mean? And right. it's, it's just like if you think of uh, Stevie Ray and Johnny Winter and ZZ Top, and well, not, they're, they're pretty rock, but uh, um, T-Bone Walker even back then was, was doing unusual, more of wild things and, uh, and, and really opening up the blues thing into a more of a rock and roll direction. So I just like the rock and blues, basically. So introduce me to the rest of the band. I understand that uh, now you're co-ed. Is that the first time you've been co-ed? Yeah, in fact, uh, I think so. We have, uh, when, when I first met Eloise, she had a, a great Texas blues guitar style, and I went, wow, this girl can already uh, do the thing, and I'd, I'd really like to play with her. And she sings great, too, and, uh, and that was it. Ellie Johnson on the guitar over there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my good buddy Doug Markford on the drums, uh, we used to play in countless years ago. I'm a hometown boy. I grew up here and went to KSS and stuff. And uh, we used to play in bands, not to date ourselves, but in the early 70s and stuff. And then uh, he came and walked up to me one day in Vancouver a few years ago and said, geez, I'd like to get back into the drums again. And how about tossing me some gigs? So I did, and here he is, and he's playing greater than ever. Excellent. A monster. And? And Mr. Terry Stredwick, who uh, we ran into, into in Kamloops through uh, common friends of ours in the music scene here in Kamloops. And he was available to do some dates, and we started doing some dates. The uh, first major thing we did is we re rehearsed like heck for about a, a week and went down and opened for Paul Rogers at the Commodore Ballroom. That was one of our very first dates with all original tunes for a 55-minute set, and that went over quite well. Great. It's been rocking since then. Now, you've got a CD out, The Boogeyman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a title track on the CD. And uh, that was recorded uh, uh, in Vancouver in 1997. Ah, and you're going to do that for us now. We're going to do that title track for you right now, yeah? All right. The Vaqueros Boogeyman on the TV7 Midday Show. Cool.
baby, let me get along. sessions because it's all the same there's one on Saturday and one on Sunday and it's what it is it's a gateway for people to get out of the closet and bring their their music to the Yale and learn about uh, the form of the blues because if they don't know about the form of the blues we quickly educate them well uh, it's a screening process actually if you walked up to me and I didn't know you from anybody else and you had a guitar in your hand and they said okay well I'd like to play today I would ask you a few discriminating questions I would ask you okay uh, what songs would you sing if you got up there for instance and then if they name me three blues standards by Holland Wolf and Muddy Waters and you know the people like that I go right on get up there and sing and play but if they you know call Nazareth or Blue Oyster Cult I say well you know discreetly you know this you know come back when you know some blues and it'll happen for you but there's you know it's not blues is a very wide category of music of course so you know, quite a, you know, the Lemon Song by Led Zeppelin is totally perfect, you know what I mean? But uh, just, not, and, you know, we try to keep it focused on the blues here at the Yale because it is the home of the blues. So I ask a few questions, make sure they know what they're doing, and I send them up there and kind of coach them through it and make sure they're everything. And if, even if they have uh, a rough time on there, I'll work with, try to work with them after the show and tell them what they could have done better and stuff like that. So. Uh, it's sort of an educational thing as well as just a place to come and have fun and have a couple of beers. Well, it just, I was always the guy with the truck and the PA when I was a kid, right? And then it just sort of grew from there and then I never went to school for it. I think it's sort of the school of real life that feeds back, figure out what's wrong and fix it basically. So that it's pretty, it's not an easy thing to do. I'm, I'm actually into that thing too. I'm very lucky that we have a few good sound men here at the Yale uh, because it's such a great sound man gig. Guys like it for one thing. Because it's very hard to find good sound man. It's, it's a rare thing, and they, you know, if they're once they get really good, they probably get sucked up by the movie industry and stuff like that because they're definitely hard to find. But we're lucky here at the Yale. We got you know pretty consistent good sound over the years, so it's all good. Um, uh, I originally had gotten together about 1987, a long time ago, with uh, some good pals of mine, Pat Stewart, who plays in a bunch of bands right right now, and a guy named Norm Fisher and a guy named Dave Kilner, a couple of different bass players, and we did a bunch of gigs. Um, playing everywhere in the Lower Mainland basically and doing a little bit of touring. I was much more active with the band in those days than I am these days of course and then because I've been focused on the Yale lately. Um, two guys come to the top of my head of course. So Robbie King was the guy who played here at the Yale. He actually lived upstairs for a lot of years. Uh, wonderful fellow, one of the best Hammond players virtually in the world and because he lived upstairs I was hanging around town. He's kind of stopped gotten out of touring, but this is kind of where his life was, was the Yale. So every jam, he'd be here on the organ playing with us. Usually when we do our host set, in the, in the first set, like when we did our first set today, it was just the three of us. If Robbie King was in the building, he would have been on the Hammond organ. No matter what we played, he could have followed along on it and done something, you know? Because he was just an incredible player. So Robbie King was a majesty guy to play for. And I miss him dearly. He's been gone for three years now, I think, at least. And uh, maybe four, oh my God. And then the other big guy I played with was um, Mr. Long John Baldry, who I played here with a few times with, but I was in his band for 12 years, touring all over the place, so that was good. That was a, a very ex educational experience playing with Long John Baldry. Yes. Well, even the music atmosphere to me is like a big family. Like, I've kind of been here for so long that it's, it's a... And, and also with, the, with the, um, the staff and the musicians and the patrons, to me it's all one big happy family. And it's been consistent for so long now that it's really become to feel like home to me. In fact, I even did a stint when I was between residences of living upstairs for a, a, a year and a half just because it was so convenient to walk out of the bar after working here all night and then, and then uh, walking upstairs and going to sleep. It was so great. But uh, then I had to move to Kitsilano because I had enough of it. But it was all good though, all really good. Every day and every night Live it to the limit I'll make everything alright Live it to the limit I learned this lesson right You know I learned this lesson right Learn this lesson right Learn this lesson right 
lesson right. Learn this lesson right. 